بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك لعل الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء نحوا سنقرئك فلا تنسى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My beloved sons and daughters we are going to take part two of learning Arabic grammar in five sessions like the index of Arabic grammar so it's a theory part then practice needs like this is like an introductory course so I'm just giving you an index so then later on Inshallah, in future, we are going to apply this on the grammar of the Holy Quran. Okay, so at this point, uh, I want you to focus on the index. And this index needs to be memorized as you memorize Surah Al-Fatiha. Okay, if you have trouble in memorizing, make notes like flow charts and those kind of things. So when we start doing the grammar of the Quran, so keep the chart beside you. So in that case, you don't need to memorize it. So we will practice and you will have your chart of the grammar beside you, the index. All what you need to do in Arabic language is get the index of the terminologies, different uh, word clauses. What, what is this word? What is this word? What is that word? And once you index it in your mind, then after that, it becomes smooth. Uh, I've done that. Many of my students, they have done it. So inshallah, I hope you will be also successful uh, in that. Uh, but you will need to do a lot of practice and a lot of review at home. Don't come back to this session and you have not reviewed the previous session. Okay, so let's come back and uh, see what did we do last time. Last time we said the Arabic word is either mabni, fixed, the end sign does not change, or mu'rab, changeable. Okay. So it could have uh, end signs changes, Dhamma, Fatha, Kasra, depending on the grammatical position. Let's come now and go furthermore. So quickly, but for the for obvious example is subject, okay? Who does the action, who does the verb. Mansu, obvious example is object, who the action is done upon. Majroor, an obvious example is a possessor, the one who possesses a thing. Kitabu Muhammadin, book of Muhammadin in Majroor. Majroor, we are going to talk about it later. Now, before we start take, uh, uh, taking the examples of mar Marfu, examples of Mansub, examples of Majroor, examples of Majroor, I want you to uh, mention this uh, rule of thumb. In Arabic language, we said we're how many? We have four grammatical positions. Noun takes like noun, an ism, takes marfu, takes mansu, takes majroor position. Never, a noun is never majzoom. You will never find a noun with a sukun unless if it's a mabni, otherwise changeable position. Uh, majzoom, no. An ism, there is no majzoom ism. So there is no grammatical position uh, majzoom. And verb. al -fa'il. Verb can be marfu, can be mansub, but it is never majroom. And it is majzoom. And verb precisely present tense. Al fa'il al mudara. In Arabic language, present tense is the only changeable tense. Past tense does not change. 
It's a mabni. Past tense is mabni. Imperative, fi'l amr, or future tense, it is also uh, like imperative. Do something. It is mabni. So, in Arabic language, the, the tense which is changeable, which is mu'arab, is al-fi'l al-mudari'ah. Present tense. Present tense. Uh, the rest of the tense, the particles, particles, tools, or prepositions, they're all fixed. Like fi, in, uh, aw, wow, all these things are fixed. They're always mabni. They're always mabni. So the only thing in Arabic language is changeable is al fi'l al mudari it could be marfur, it could be mansub, it could be majzub. No majrur. No majrur. A noun, nouns are plenty, they are changeable. Few are not changeable, like pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, they are not changeable. But all the nouns, majority of the nouns are changeable, and they could be marfur, they could be mansub, they could be majrur, no majzub. I'm going to give you one minute. Tell me. Uh, this all things which we had said uh, uh, past week, marfu with the dhamma, and mansu with the fatha, and majru with the kasra, and majzu with the sukun, and tell me noun what is noun what grammatical position does noun not take, what grammatical position does verb not take. So I'll give you one minute. Okay. Now, marfu, marfu, the obvious sign is dhamma, and an example is subject. Mansu, an obvious sign is fatha, and an example is object. Majrur is an ob uh, obvious sign is uh, kasra, and an example is possessor, and then majzu, uh, obvious sign is sukun. Nouns. They cannot be majru. They can be marfu, mansu, majru. Verbs, they cannot be majru. They can be marfu, mansu, and majru. So now we have, after doing this, we are going to start taking the noun. So now uh, we are going to take this majru out. So when we discuss the verbs, we are going to bring it back. We said that nouns are not majzu. Now, let's see here. To understand this, I'm going to write a sentence. A very basic sentence. Kataba wrote for those who can't read Arabic Kataba Muhammadun Muhammad wrote so Muhammadun so this is the sign, this is the sign, I'm circling the end sign, grammatical sign. Dar sal mad rasati dar sal dar sal sal Al Mad Rasati. Okay, so we have a sentence here. This is verb, past tense, he wrote. We are going to discuss this later on. So our three grammatical positions, we have them here. Muhammadun, subject. Marfu' with the Dhamma. Muhammadun, remember this the sentence which I'm saying, you have to understand. Whenever we'll analyze the 
sentences in future, I'll be saying like that. Muhammadun. What is Muhammadun? It's a subject. What is it? What is the sign of it? What is the grammatical position of it? It's from the marfur. What is the sign of it? Dhamma. So Muhammad is subject marfur with Dhamma. Again, I'm going to be slow now. What is Muhammad? Grammatically, it's a subject. What is his grammatical position? It's from the marfur category. Is it marfur? Mansub or majroon? It is marfur. What is the sign of it? Dhamma. So Muhammad is a subject. I'll, 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 uh, and it is also marfur category. So subcategory, it's a subject. Major category, it's marfur. With the dhamma. So now, if I want to write what is Muhammadun, it is a subject. Marfur. With a dhamma. This is how you analyze Arabic word. What is it? Subcategory of it? Subject. What is the major category of it? The umbrella? Marfur. With what? With Bamma. So Marfur means nominative. Okay? So subject Marfur with Bamma. So Muhammadun is a subject which is Marfur with the Bamma. So now we got the grammatical analysis of Muhammadun. I can write here Muhammadun just for your information that this is Muhammadun's thing. What is Darsa? Okay, it's a little bit of black so that we can. What is Darsa? So Darsa is object, it was written. What is the major uh, grammatical position? Mansub. So it's an object which is Mansub. With what? Fatha. So again, can you tell me what is uh, Darsa? It is a? Oh, object with Mansub. Object, Mansub. <coughs> with a Fatha. With a Fatha, good. It's, it's specific title, it's an object. And it is Mansub. Major category is from the Mansub group. And then what is the sign of it? Fatha. Fatha. Good. Now let's see the, the, the last one, Al Madrasati. Al Dars al Madrasati. Lesson of the school. Of the school. Okay? So Al Madrasati. Let's say Al Madrasati. Okay? So Al Madrasati, what is Al Madrasati? Possessor. Possessor. So what is it? Majru. Majru. With the Kasra. Kasra. Good. So if you have understood this structure, the coming session will be easy when we will list down all the marfur. So this is how you analyze the Arabic sentence. What is it as a specific title? What is it under which category it comes? Marfur, Mansur, Majroor. And what is the sign of it? This is how you analyze Arabic grammar. You look at the end sign and you see what is the title of it? What is the major title of it? And then uh, the, you see what is the sign of it. So when we say I'rab, when you will say I'rab, in the I'rab means analyze the sentence. When your teacher tells you I'rab, I'rab, analyze the sentence. Okay? So inshallah we are going to take more, uh, more exercises from the Holy Quran, the ayat of the Quran. So you will get the grip of this Arabic uh, language, Arab. Okay? So, I will, before I erase, again, I'm going to mention that in Arabic language, we have fixed, changeable. Fixed, we're not going to touch them. And we have verb, uh, particles, nouns. Verbs and particles, we are going to discuss with them later. Because nouns are the most uh, changeable words in Arabic language. And nouns, we are going to take the changeable, mu'arab, 
So we are going to, we took an example of Marfu' Mansub Majroon in one sentence. So we had a verb, Kataba, we said we are going to discuss that later. It's a past tense, bro. And then Muhammadun, which is a subject, Marfu' with the Dhamma, which is a subject, Marfu' with the Dhamma. And then Darsa, which is an object, Mansub with the Fatha, which is an object, Darsa, Mansub with the Fatha. And then Al Madrasati, which is a possessor, Majroor with the Kasra. Possessor, Majroor with the Kasra. So for those who do not, cannot read Arabic, so I had wrote this Kataba with an A, A. Muhammadun, so there's an U sound here, uh, which is a subject, uh, marfu' or sound, and then that's a A sound, which is a mansub, and then we have E sound, which is a possessor, N signs, N vowel sounds. Okay, so, so Muhammadun is subject, marfu' with the Dhamma, Darsa is object, mansub with the Fatha. Madrasati is a possessor, majroor with the kasra. Possessor means it belongs to. This lesson belongs to who? Belongs to the school. It's a school lesson. It's a lesson of the school. See, of the, of the. So this is the possessive phrase in Arabic maybe. Now I'm going to remove this and be ready for the, uh, for the marfu. So now we are going to take the list what in Arabic language are the marfu'as? So we took an obvious example which was a subject. Okay, now we are going to take the rest of the marfu'a. So I'm going to remove this so that we are going to now focus on the marfu'a noun. In Arabic language, we have eight marfu'a nouns. We call them al-marfu'at, plural of marfu'. Eight marfu' nouns. So eight grammatical positions of the marfu'. So sub-positions of marfu', they have eight. So before that, I want you to make this note before I start no in arabic language in english language you start with a what subject subject, subject. muhammad is coming <coughs> ali is uh, helping uh, fatima is uh, cooking whatsoever you see so you start with a noun subject in arabic you can start with a verb as well so that is a difference between arabic so in arabic we have a nominal sentence and we have verbal sentence. So sentence can be nominal, can be verbal. Nominal we call it al jumla al ismiya. Al jumla al ismiya. Then we have al jumla. Al-fi'liyya. So al-jumla al-ismiyya, al-jumla al-fi'liyya. Fi'l is verb. Fi'l is verb. Jumla al-ismiyya. So jumla al-ismiyya like Muhammadun qa'imun. Jumla al-fi'liyya يقوم محمد. So this one is telling us that Muhammad is standing in a standing position. This one is telling us Muhammad is in the process of standing. Qiyam is standing. Is standing. And you can have different meanings as well. But just to see 
This one started with a noun. This one started with a present tense verb. So an Arabic sentence could start with a noun, could start with a verb. There shouldn't be a problem. So we have al jumla al ismiya, al jumla al fa'liya. Nominal sentence, verbal sentence. Okay? Nominal sentence, jumla means sentence, jumla. So just remember this word jumla. Okay. So now I can start mentioning the marfu'ah. As long as we know that the sentence in Arabic language is two types, because I will try to put an example here. So now, I have marfu'at. Marfu'at are eight. First one is verbal subject. We call it al-fa'il. Fa'il. And then we have substitute, sub, substitute, substitute of verbal subject. Naib el fail. Okay. Al fail. So, remember our uh, session uh, which we said? Kataba Muhammadun Adarsa. Okay? This was our example. Kataba Muhammadun Darsa al Madrasati. That was. So now we had made it. Muhammad wrote the lesson. So this is our example. This is a subject. Verbal subject. Marfu. With what? Noun. So that's our example. Muhammadun is a fine, regular subject. Who wrote the lesson? Muhammad wrote the lesson. So Muhammad is fa'il, marfu' with the dhamma. Or you can say verbal subject, marfu' with the dhamma. So we will start saying fa'il instead of verbal subject. Fa'il, marfu' with the dhamma. Fa'il means action. Fa'il, the doer. If I'll do. So fa'il, fa'il. Fa'il, which is marfu' with the dhamma. Now, when the president travels, who takes the place of the president? If a president leaves, vice president. Vice president. So we have this vice subject. We call it naib, vice, or somebody who takes over. So what happens many times, we just want to hide the file. Maybe there's a threat, there's a danger on the file. So we want to hide the file. So what we will do is, we will hide the fa'il. So we will change the verb into a passive form, kutiba, not kataba, kutiba, and the fa'il will go away, and the, na, uh, the, the object will become na'if fa'il. The object will take the place of fa'il. So kutiba dam. What will be the sign? What was the sign of Fa'il? Two. The crown. <coughs> so he, the, 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 the king went, his vice took the crown. So this, so it will become what? Darsu. Remember, the double signs, if there's Alif or Lam, we will not have double signs. Okay? Alif or Lam takes single sign. Many cases where we don't have Alif or Lam, double signs are coming. Many cases. There are some odd cases as well. But whenever there's Alif or Lam, it will never be on. 
double vowels do not come with alif wa lam. At darsun, it cannot be. So, the sign O, because the, the fa'il disappeared, so we have this na'ib fa'il. So, we have this vice of subject or substitute. Uh, I think vice is better, vice of subject, because we understand vice. Vice of subject, but it's better to say in Arabic, na'ib fa'il. Na'ib fa'il, okay? Na'ib fa, na'ib fa'il, na'ib fa'il. So, uh, I'll give you one minute to just sink this in your mind. Fa'il and na'ib fa'il. What is fa'il and what is na'ib fa'il? Fa'il is a regular subject. Na'ib fa'il pushes the subject, hides the subject, and takes the place of it, and changes the verb to passive. This verb passive, later on we'll do. Don't, don't bother yourself with this now. The main thing is now that this gone away, this took its place, so the sign. So now before Darsa was Mansub, remember. Darsa was Mansub. Now Darsu. Dars is Marfu'a now. Why? Because it took the place of Marfu'a. It, it chucked the Marfu'a away and sat on its place. So we said you have to take the sign, you can't. But I was, I was object, yes. But even if you sound like object now, you still are an object in meaning, but your title has been different now. Now you are now a file. You still functions as an object. What was written? The lesson was written. So it is an object, but we don't call it object in Arabic language. We call it now a file because the sign change. Object always has a sound. Now it is O sound. So, U sound means things have changed. The meaning has not changed. The object is still object. But the sign has changed. The grammatical position has changed. The grammatical position is not object. It has the meaning of the object. But the grammatical position, we call it successor of the subject. Vice of the subject. Replacement of the subject. Subject gone. He took its place. Now he has to take the sign. So, it, it, grammatical position is marfu'a. Grammatical title is na'ib fa'il. But the meaning is still object. Okay? The meaning did not change. But that position changed. Then we take this husband and wife. These are couples. We call them mubtada and khabar. So, this was one. This was vice was two. This is Muqtada. And then Khabar. This is very easy to understand. It's in English because it's a nominal sentence. Jumla ismi. This was Jumla Fa'liya because it started with a verb. Now all we are going to take is Jumla Ismiya. Okay? Jumla Ismiya starts with a noun. Jumla Ismiya. Starts with a noun. Mubtada. You can write it in Arabic as well. Mubtada. Al Mubtada. Al Khabar. Okay. Al Mubtada. That means Ibtida. Beginning. Bidaya. Mubtada. You start something. Khabar. Information. Inform. Akhbar. Khabar, akhbar, you inform something. So in English, we have subject predicate. Subject predicate. Muhammad is a messenger. So Muhammad, subject, you predicated with what? You inform, you're giving information about what is Muhammad? He's a messenger. Well, Ali is standing. Ali is standing. So what is Ali? It's a subject. Subject is standing. We are informing, giving information about. We are giving khabar, akhbar. We are giving information, information about Ali that he is standing. So that's basically the meaning. 
So subject, but this subject we call it nominal subject. Muqtada is nominal subject. That was verbal subject, remember? The jumlal ismi jumlal fa'liya, the jumlal fa'liya had verbal subject. Here we have nominal, nomi num. Nominal, nominal subject. So it's a subject, but it's a subject of nominal sentence. Subject of what? Nominal sentence. Yes. And here file was subject was subject of verbal, verbal sentence. Muqtada is subject of nominal. nominal. File was subject of verbal, verbal sentence. So if this is a subject, that is a subject. But due to its grammatical location, it is coming in the from it has come in the beginning of the sentence, so it is nominal subject. Okay? So like let's take an example. What was the example we said? Muhammadun Qaimun. So Muhammad basically is a muqtada. Marfu with the Dhamma. Remember, Muqtada. Marfu, major category. With what is the sign of it? Dhamma. So it is Muqtada. Marfu is one of the Marfu'at with Dhamma. Qa'imun. What, what, what is Qa'im? It's informing about Muhammad. It's giving us Khabar. So Khabar is Basically, if you want to translate it in English, it's a predicate. You are predicating. Okay? Predicate. 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 Okay? So, it is a khabar. Marfu. With the bumper. So these are husband and wife. Okay? These are husband and wife. Muqtada, marfu' with the dhamma. Khabar, marfu' with the dhamma. So these are our uh, components of nominal sentence. These were components of our verbal sentence. These are components of our nominal sentence. So now, muqtada is a nominal subject. Fa'il was a verbal subject. Fa'il was a verbal subject. Muqtada is a nominal subject. Fa'il needs a fa'il, verb, which was there. Uh, Muqtada needs a wife, which is a predicate. Khabar. They, they, they always come together. Muqtada khabar. Muqtada khabar. They are husband and wife. You can't separate them. Okay, you can mess up with their life, as we are going to do now, but you can't, you can't separate them. There's Muqtada. There has to be a khabar. Like if there's a verb, there has to be a subject. You can't, otherwise, it's not a sentence. They're bachelors. If they're coupled, they're a sentence, living together, verb must have a fa'il. Verb must have a fa'il. Muqtada must have a khabar. Muqtada khabar come together in couples. Okay? Fa'il, fa'il come together with the couple. Fa'il, fa'il. Muqtada khabar. Fa'il, fa'il. Muqtada khabar. So let's see these muqtada khabar. So now we have, alhamdulillah, we have four, four marfu'at done. Are you guys with me? Marfu'at number one was fa'il, verbal subject. Marfu'at with the Marfu'at number two was na'ib fa'il, vice of the subject. Kicks the subject out, takes its place, takes its crown, but still if the meaning is subject meaning but it i mean object meaning but it takes the place position and then we have nominal subject muqtada marfu with the dhamma khabar predicate marfu with the dhamma now we come to these you know those uh, troublemakers sisters okay they're always troublemaker sisters. Some sisters are husband sisters. Some sisters are wife sisters. Okay. So this poor Muqtada and Khabar, they're a nice couple, husband and wife. Okay. They're living together. 
They're nicely related, and here comes the sisters. We have two types of sisters. Sisters that affect the wife, sisters that affect the husband. Sisters of Cana. Sisters of who? Cana. Urdu language Khan is like a here. Cana is like past, was. Cana. Wa kana Allahu. Allah was. Okay. Uh, so he was. Kana Muhammadun. Muhammadun was. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So was. So you put something kana. So we have kana plus several words. They act as kana. So we call them sisters of kana. So what they do? They come and whisper the wife. They whisper who? The wife. The wife. Husband does not change. But the wife changes. Okay? Husband does not change. So here we are going to put the predicate noun of kana. We are going to put noun of kana. Ism kana. Okay? That means noun followed by kana. So if we put kana here, Kana, Muhammadun is husband. Will he change? So that's why we have Muhammadun is from the Marfur. The wife, oh my goodness, they messed up with the wife and they changed her. So she was, she was, mashallah, cooperative with husband. Now she has changed her sign to Qa'iman. So Sisters of Kana, they affect the khabar. They affect the khabar. So they change the sign from O to A. So they make it mansub. We are going to take this in the mansubah. Make note. We are going to take this in the mansubah. But here in the marfu'ah, we have this guy, mashallah, who's tolerating the change of the wife. So the wife has changed. The husband says, no, why? Keep the dhamma. No. No. The sisters, they came and they, they kept in the kana, whispered in the kana. In Urdu, kana is like, kana is like an ear. So they whispered in the ear, change, change, change. What your husband is like this, 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 this. Oh, really? Yes, yes. So she changed now. So now she's from Mansub. She's no more Marfur. She's no more Marfur. She's Mansub. The sisters, they messed up in her mind and made her change her sign. So that's why in Marfu'at, we will consider the husband, the noun of kana, ism kana, which is Marfu'at. So noun of kana. But in some cases, the sisters of the husband, they come, which are, uh, so here ism kana, we put sisters, kana or with sisters. Sisters, S I S T, sisters of Cana. So they did a miserable job in changing the wife. Now there are sisters of Inna. Sisters of Inna. So we have here Inna, they come and they mess up with the husband. So the wife stays loyal, unchanged. So the, the predicate, which is the wife, we said, predicate of Inna and its sisters, or its sisters. Kana or its sisters. So there's a group of words. We, they have same effect. So we call them sisters of Inna. So inna, they have similar sisters. So now we let's see what happens. Now the husband has changed. These sisters, they came and they messed up with the husband. And now we have a husband who has changed. And the wife, she's, she's loyal and she's not changed. But the husband, her mind is messed up. Inna Muhammadan. Ah, oh my goodness, they changed him. 
They chained the husband. Inna Muhammadan. Qa'imun. Inna Muhammadan. Qa'imun. So Qa'imun is marfu'ah. Loyal, still, not chained. So what Inna does, changes the husband. What Kana does, changes the wife. Okay? So when Kana changes the wife, husband is still from the marfu'ah. When Inna changes the husband, the wife predicate is still from the marfu'ah. Okay? So how many are done? Six. Two left. Okay? So just let's recap quickly. Okay? And see if you can uh, memorize until here. Because the last two are easy. So marfu'at. There are eight uh, grammatical positions, great grammatical titles, which come under marfu'at. First is fa'il, okay, verbal subject, fa'il. Second is na'ib fa'il. Third is mubtada. Fourth is khabar. Fifth is noun of can, which stays loyal. Sixth is predicate of inna. So the wife. Here, fifth, husband stays okay. Sixth, wife stays okay, doesn't change. Okay. So I'll give you one minute. I want to hear this. Six, okay. Uh, I don't want examples, I just need to know the titles and uh, later on we'll see the examples. So I'll give you one minute. So now as you can see that we have uh, done six marfu'at. Fa'il, verbal subject. Now a fa'il, the one who checks out the subject, takes its place, still it's an object, but grammatical position changes, the sign changes. Vice of subject, not fa'il. Then we have muqtada, nominal subject. We have khabar, its wife, predicate. So we have this sweet husband and wife. They both have same signs. Mamma and mamma, marfu' and marfu'. And then these sisters of Kana come and they mess up with the mind of the wife. But still the husband is marfu'. So we say esim kana. So the muqtada becomes esim kana, noun of kana which is marfu'. And then we have sisters of Inna. They also mess up with the mind. But mind of who? Mind of the husband here. So wife stays loyal with her sign. So she's from the marfu'at. We call her khabar. Inna, khabar, inna. And then we have the last one, which is the kada. Noun of kada. We call it ism kada. Ism kada. Noun of kada. Uh, if you know that uh, there is this dua, way, uh, ayat of the Quran, way yakadu ladina kafaru. Many people they keep that in their in their houses for the blessings of the Quranic ayat and this and that. So any of this way yakadu ladina kafaru. So that's yakadu is kada. So there is the sisters of kada. So there are group of the words which are called sisters of kada, akhawat kada. Okay? Kada. So here, kada muhammadun, kada muhammadun, and Yaisha. Muhammad almost was going to live forever. Okay? If it was not for Qada of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was almost like he was, he, was, he was someone who would live forever until the day of judgment. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. So, uh, therefore, Kada uh, Muhammadun. This is called noun of Kada. 
noun of kada noun of kada marfu with the dhamma kada so kana kada okay kana kada the functions are different that's why kada is not from sister of kana kada is a different category because its function is a little bit different than kana so that's why we kept it from the seven marfu so these are the seven marfuat these are the seven marfuat uh, and me, me, I'll go again quickly. Fa'il, verbal subject. Na'if fa'il, vice of the verbal subject. Muqtada and khabar, sweet husband, couples, loving couples, husband and wife. They got married, mashallah, they both are same idea, same sign, same thing. And then his sisters, they come and they mess up with their life. So now the wife is messed up. So the Kana, sisters of Kana, they change the wife, but the husband is still in the nominal phase. It's still in the marfu. And then predicate of inna, it is the mansub. Predicate of inna is also, sorry, predicate of inna is marfu. So the wife is now, okay, husband's mind has gone messed up. The sister of inna, they have messed up with the mind of the husband. So they change them to mansub. But wife is still loyal and she's still marfu. And then we have this kada. Kada does also the effect of kana. So the noun is marfu. So we call it ism kada marfu with the dhamma. So these are the seven. The eighth one is easy and it's common for all the uh, marfu'at. So, and that will not take much of time. Now, uh, I'm, I'm just going to give you a word of caution. You have to repeat listening to this. Uh, this video because I have indexed the marfu'at. You need to repeat them and try to understand them. So once you understand them, go to the next uh, video on the mansubat. If you have not understood the marfu'at, please don't go to mansubat. Okay? First understand the marfu'at, the nominals, and then go to accusatives, which is the mansubat, which is the object family. So now uh, just focus on the so now the last one, eighth bar four, is very easy. It is the, it is called attabir, follower, attabir. So attabir, attabir is a follower, uh, and there are four types of tabir, four types of tabir. So we are going to take now a taber, a taber, follower. Taber goes into the marfu and mansub and majroo. Why? Because it follows. So let's take the conjunction. I'm going to take today only conjunction. Conjunction. Call it al which is what means and. So we have Muhammad wa Ali. Muhammad wa Ali. Muhammad wa Ali. Okay? So this wow is our. Tab, a conjunction component. So now, if we had Muhammadun, then this Aliyun will be Tabi. It will follow. Whatever is before Wow, whatever is after Wow, will follow before Wow. If it was Muhammadan, we will have Aliyan. So this will follow this. That's Tabi. If it was Muhammadin, we will have what? Ali? Ali yin. yin. So it follows. So the post wow, post conjunction follows the pre conjunction. That's all in the eighth one. So eighth one is follower and it comes into all marfu mansu majru. So this is the marfu. Marfu. So tabi of marfu is marfu. Tabi of mansub is mansub. 
Tabi of Majroor is Majroor. So we say, what is Aliyun? Aliyun is Tabi. Why? Because it is followed by the conjunction sign, and it, it follows the conjunction sign, and uh, the pre-conjunction sign is Marfu', so this has to be Marfu'. So whatever is pre-conjunction, we will take this in the Mansub, this is Mansub, and this is Majroor. Why? Because it's pre is Mansub, it will be Mansub. Because it's pre is Majroor, it will be Majroor. So, Marfu' Mansub Majroor. So if Tabi' of the Marfu' is Marfu', the, if, the, if, if, the, if, the, if the noun af, after the, before the conjunction, particle, wa, is Marfu', then afterward it is Marfu'. Mansub, Mansub, Majroor, Majroor. So the, this is an example of Tabi'. Further, we are going to take in our next session the four types of Tabi'. But at this point, I want you to just focus on one type of Tabi', which is conjunction, Al-Atf. This is Wal, which is uh, in English, we say N. Muhammad and Ali. Muhammad wa Ali. So I hope that uh, you will review this, uh, this uh, session. And then, insha'Allah, we are going to take the mansubat. So, if we have taken the marfu'at and mansubat, that's the majority of the Arabic grammar index. And everything is smooth and easy. So, I want you to focus on these first two, three sessions properly. This will build up your foundation of Arabic grammar. And then, obviously, you have to do practice. So try to find out the sentences similar to the sentence in the Quran or in the Arabic language books and try to uh, self-analyze. Oh, this is the subject. This is the object. This has the O sign. This is the R sign. This is the E sign. So try to find out these uh, things and hopefully uh, you will benefit. Now, I'm not a professional, perfect Arabic grammar teacher, I'm trying my best to simplify it for you all so that when you sit with a professional, you say, oh, we took this, we took this, we took this. So I'm not claiming that I'm a professional, but uh, there might be much better teachers than me there in Arabic grammar, Arabic language. Uh, please refer to them. My job is that there are many times there are complications in understanding I'm trying to simplify it in a way that you can understand the, uh, the grammar from the professional teachers. I hope it, this was beneficial and I hope that you will benefit from the coming sessions. And I pray that you grasp the Arabic language properly, Arabic grammar, and you are able to understand more of the Quran and implement it more in the Quran. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين <تصفيق>